What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to be continuing with the Predator build and today I'm going to be doing legs. These are thigh pieces here and also biceps as well. Upper arm covers essentially. Sorry I did not have a video last week but I've been kind of caught up and busy between being extremely sick extremely sick for an extended period of time and I've had this venom commission I'm working on and this venom commission has a mouth that opens and closes so it's been a bit of an engineering feat for me to figure out how to get this to work properly and it's not been the funnest thing but it is finally coming together and between getting sick and having this commission I did get a little bit behind sorry about that but I am now back on track, have a video for this weekend, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and just jump right into the build. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing here, of course, is tracing out all of my pattern pieces. And I, of course, have to do doubles because I need a left and a right thigh. So whenever I trace the right pattern first, I flip it over and trace it, and that forms a left pattern. And I've done that for every single pattern piece because you are going to need two of each one. Next, I'm going to cut these out. However, whenever I cut them, I'm actually not going to cut the edges straight. I'm going to cut the edges at an angle going this way on this outside edge and on all the edges except for the top. For example, on this one. Any of the flat top pieces, I am going to cut straight. But the reason why the sides of all these are going to be angled is because I'm going to heat and curve all these. And whenever I do, it makes them a little difficult to have them flush and glue and seal evenly. All my pattern pieces. And you'll notice here that they're all curved because I have heated them with a heat gun and I've curved every single one of them for this right side. And I've done all on the left side, except for this last piece that I'm going to show you how I do it on camera. Even though you may have an idea if you already do this type of stuff, or if you've watched my other videos. But, I'm going to show you again anyways. And for a quick clarification, the order of the patterns, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. And the last one I have not heated is pattern piece 13 for the left side. And to heat this, I'm going to use a heat gun. This is a Drill Master heat gun. It has two settings, low and high. I'm going to put it on high. front, the back, and then the front, just like you see here. Normally I would use both hands, but this is a pretty simple piece, and I can do it using one hand whilst it is still hot. I just curve it into shape, and as I'm working into shape, it's cooling. Now be careful, you don't heat the foam too much. If you get it too hot, it will melt, or possibly catch fire. So, if you're young, make sure you have a parent or guardian do this, or assist you with this. And this is the last piece for the left side that's going to go over here. Next, what I'm going to start doing is going from the one, two, three back. And I'm going to start contact cementing all these pieces together. Okay, so I've already glued together one, two, three, four, and five. Now, I glue together one and two first. Now, when you glue these two together, I'll show you here in the left pieces, and you'll notice that they're a little bit longer than what this actually is. I didn't trim this. It's not meant to be trimmed. Glue the two together, line it up with the center, and then force this in by squishing this down a little bit as you contact cement it together. And same thing on the bottom. Find the center, and we glue it on. Start from the top and work your way down and force it in. When you force it in, it gives it the extra definition and the curvature this way that I did not heat into it. That you're going to have to pull and stress, uh, stress and push into it. Okay, next I have glued together 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. I first attached 6 and 7, and then I attached 10 and 8, 
And then I forced in nine. And as you can see, there's a gap here. Much like on the abdominal armor, if you watch that video, that gap will be filled in with silicone. And it's a point where the muscle groups come together and you want a little bit of extra indentation. So that is intentional in the pattern. It's not just a hole or a gap or a mistake. It's supposed to be like that for the silicone. Now I'm going to join these two together. So I have all the pattern pieces glued together. I have not done any heat forming to this. When it's glued together properly, and like I say, you have to push and pull and tug everything into place, it comes out pretty rounded on its own. Now, some of the problems I've had due to the fact that I've had to force all these in place, and I am using damp weldwood contact cement. I'm not using barge. Barge, I think, would do a better job holding this, but this is much less money. And ultimately what I do is with my dollar store super glue, I take it and on the seams and areas, especially, let's see here, especially in areas like this number nine, it wants to pull apart. So once I get it shoved in place as good as I can and it's stuck there, before it starts to pull apart again, I just run a little bit of super glue along it to help hold all those areas in place. I run it along the back first. Once I'm sure that the back is solidly connected, any areas in the front I may have a problem, I'll just go through and where the seam is separating I'll just dab a little bit down in there and it will help hold it together the rest of the way. Once you put this in it ain't coming apart. Now as far as adjustments or trimming that I've had to do this I immediately tried it on. And this of course is the right leg so this part here is the small of your knee or the back of your knee. Your kneecap would theoretically actually be in front here but I had to trim a little off this back edge here and a little off the top front edge here and I also trimmed up the actual back of the knee because whenever I bent my leg back to walk it was a little hard to walk but that's also why I make these patterns a little longer and a little bigger than what I actually am partially because most people are a little bit taller than me and have a little bit longer legs so that's part of the issue the other issue is if it's too short I gotta start over if it's too long I can just trim a little here and a little there Here's the actual trimmings that I had to do to get it to fit me. And now I'm pretty much good to go. I'm going to go ahead and start to glue together the left side just like I glued together the right side. So here is both of the finished leg pieces put together. And you can see the right and the left. This is of course the front. Here is the back. I have used some painter's tape to hold the two sides together just for the sake of showing this off real quick before I start getting into sanding and other things. But yeah, this is pretty much what it should look like. I did do a little bit of heat forming after the fact, just to get some of the stuff evened out and looking the way I wanted. Of course, you want curved in the center, going in and meeting at the actual seams where you glue it. But yeah, that's pretty much it so far. Next, we're going to start doing sanding. Okay, so in some of these areas, like here, you can see I didn't get it glued the most even, so I'm going to want to sand this out. And to speed this process up, I'm going to be using a Dremel rotary tool. I get asked a lot of times about where I set this. It's usually in between 15 and 20, if you have an adjustable one. Okay, so now that I have the joint sealed on the legs, I'm taking Plasti Dip. And you can see, I haven't sprayed any here. Just giving it a nice wet coat to help seal in the foam and all that goodness so that we have a nice sealed surface that will not absorb the paint completely into the foam whenever we need to paint it. Okay, so now that I am waiting on the plastic dip to dry on the legs. I'm going to start on the right and left upper arms. So what I have here is R1, R2, R3, and R4. And all of these, once I trace them out onto my 8mm thick foam, I flip them over and trace them out again to get the left side, all four pieces. And before I start gluing any of these together, same as before, I'm going to start heating some shape into them with my heat gun. Alright, I've begun to heat and shape my pieces using a heat gun. Uh, I simply turn it on high, much like with the legs. Okay. 
And then once the pieces are nice and hot, you can begin to bend them and shape them using your fingers and your hands. I may want to wear work gloves if you like to get your foam really hot. Never done this before, be careful. If it's foam too hot, it can melt or catch fire. So to show you the difference between the flat-ish pieces over here and the right ones, these right here, the number one piece, must be heated to uh, have a nice domed curve in it because that's going to be your shoulder. And this one is going to be going around the back of my right arm, and this one helps to join these two together. I just put a slight uh, curve in that, not much. This one is a little bit more extreme because it's going to be going around the back of my arm with straps coming to this piece, which is pretty uh, extreme of a shape in comparison to the other. Not only did I curve it this way, I also curved it this way. I had to literally take my kneecap and press and pull on it to get that type of shape in it so that it would match up and wrap around my bicep whenever I'm wearing it. And you notice the one over here is just flat and kind of a weird round blobby shape so yeah that was the hardest one to shape was this one here you know that all the pieces are heated and shaped the way that I would like thus far I am going to go ahead and start to glue them together first things of course that I'm going to do is glue these seams here on either side of um, uh, the top shoulder piece here the L1 and the R1 that way they will be firmly held together in place before trying to attach the other pieces. So in gluing these together, I found it would be easiest to do the one and, uh, not, not one, sorry, the two and the four first uh, by lining up the top and matching it up all the way down. And when you do this correctly, you'll have an indentation here. And then I put in the three piece starting from the top here on the longest side, putting that in, and then pulling the pieces over together, working from the top down. Went over and did the same thing on the right. You can see over here as well, has that same indentation. On the back sides, I did reinforce it with some super glue, just to make sure that the contact cement doesn't come apart, because you see there is a gap, somewhat, because I needed that shape to have it look like muscles. And next, I'm going to go ahead and attach the tops to it. Okay, I've gone ahead and used my Dremel to sand down the seams, and the seams actually came out pretty good. And I also reinforced the gap here in the seams with some hot glue. And now I'm going to go ahead and take my Plasti Dip and Plasti Dip these up just like I did with the thighs. The Plasti Dip has had time to fully dry on the arms and the legs and begin to paint them and I'm using Duplicolor Vinyl and Fabric Specialty Coating. This isn't like a paint that lays on top of something but on rubbers or plastics it absorbs into them. And I'm not going to be giving this a full solid coat. I'm going to basically be dusting it with it so that some of the black will still show through. And this stuff is a mat. It is not a gloss. It looks glossy whenever you first apply it, but it is not a gloss paint, if that makes any sense. I also feel like it gives a nice primary surface for me to airbrush on with this particular type of 
thing here. So to go over what I did, as you can see, you can still see the black showing through. I applied it more thicker in what would be the center of the muscle, the center of the shoulder, the center of the back piece here, and pretty thickly down in here. Same thing over here. Thicker in the center, thinner out towards the edges. I want it to be dark. That's kind of like what you would call makeup is contouring. We're going to call it the gradient or shading or I don't know what. I'm going to have to go through and catch this backside. But I'm going to finish these. I'm going to do the similar thing to the thighs and I'll come back and show you what all that looks like. Okay, so now that the arms and the legs as well are done. Well, not done, but they have the plastic dip and the primer and all that good stuff. What I'm going to start doing next is layering on some color using an airbrush. And what I have in here is some Testers Aztec Opaque Green. Just plain old green. I have thinned this out with a bunch of water and a little bit of Windex. And I'm going to apply this and layer it on. And where I'm predominantly going to put it is in these darker areas. The more shaded areas, that's where it's going to go. And my airbrush does have an adjustable flow. So I can just put on a little bit at a time as I want. I don't have to put it on super thick. And if I want, I can always go back in later and just add a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that on all the pieces. Uh, not too thick. You know, you can see, you can still see the some of the black and some of the tan through it. I didn't put it on, in, like I say, in a solid color. I'm just layering and trying to get like a gradient and kind of a reptilian look. Now that I have finished with the green on all the pieces, I now have some brown in here. It's a pretty ugly color of brown to be quite honest, and I'm going to go ahead and spray it up following the same path pretty much as I did for the other ones. Uh, I am going to keep it a little more towards the inside, and not so much all the way out with the green. It's going to be essentially more in through here. Okay, I have all the brown on. And like I said, predominantly put it through here. I did put a couple dots intermittently throughout on all four pieces. And much like on the Predator abs, I now have some black in here. And I'm going to start putting little dots. Okay, I have these all painted up now, and I'm pretty happy with the way that everything looks. And the next thing that I got to do is put some Velcro so I can put these on. The Velcro I'm going to be using is Industrial Strength Velcro. This is white, doesn't matter what color you have. For the biceps, I'm going to need two of these inch and a half wide elastic straps going on either side to actually hook into the velcro and I want the elastic so if I need to move my arm or something up or down too much I'll have a little bit of give but this stuff is pretty tough so once it's stretched tight it won't have too much give it'll hold it in place but I'll still have a little bit of movement alrighty so I have attached my velcro on this one of course I have elastic 
I have two elastic straps with the grippy, sticky side of it, and I have the soft stuff over here, and whenever it's on my arm and attached, it looks like that. And then just kind of covers my arm and shoulder and falls into form and function. And still need to test those with the armor. I may have to trim some off. On to the legs over here. These I put on, show you here. I used contact cement to put the soft stuff on the inside. And then the sticky stuff I glued onto some five millimeter EVA foam that I overlapped over here. That way I have some room and adjustments and it just so happens that this fits up pretty flush on my leg. Uh, the gap here, since it's white, obviously I'm probably gonna paint that with some grayish tones, or not grayish, sorry, greenish tones, and try to match it up with the rest of those little bits, some dots, etc., etc. But next, what I'm gonna do is take some of this polypro strapping. I picked this up at Walmart, I believe. Yeah, Walmart. I think it was $1.99 for this. And yeah, it's one inches wide. And 60 inches long. So that's pretty decent. I already have some out of the package though. What this is gonna be used for is, this is gonna be glued right here on this pattern piece on the side. And it's gonna come up and loop over my belt and Velcro so that these hold up. It's kind of like suspenders for my leg armor, if that makes sense. Okay, so here are all the pieces to it. And this is the straps that I attached. As you can see, there's Velcro. And on the inside here, I reinforced this with a piece of five millimeter EVA foam that covers a little bit more than the actual seam on this pattern piece here, just to make it a little bit more beefy and to make sure this doesn't come undone as I'm wearing it and walking around a convention or at Halloween during trick or treat time when I'm walking around wearing all this craziness. So yeah, and if you haven't seen the other videos with some of this stuff, go ahead and check them out. The neck piece, the belt, the ab section, the chest armor and the mask from about a year ago. All right, so that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. As always, thank you to everyone for watching and subscribing. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video and you're not a subscriber, Please subscribe. Please. It would help. <laughs> and a quick addendum. I am probably going to tint these a little bit darker because the green on this is a little bit brighter than the green on the abs. I'll probably just do some black overspray. Also, I did add a little bird skull here and a couple other little things to the loincloth itself. And I'm going to gradually do that. And if you're wondering, like, where's the net? Every predator has this net on their body. I don't have the net yet. I have to actually order some. I have to order, I think, nylon or vinyl chicken net. One and a half inch square. I don't know. It's like I can only get in like 20 foot rolls. So I'm just waiting until I get caught up on bills to actually get that stuff. But it will be added to the legs and the abs. Basically, any exposed skin area on this predator costume is going to have that net, that mesh net on it. So I haven't forgot about it. It is coming. And next... Of course, the obvious, obvious things left to do are the gauntlets with the wrist blades, the gauntlet with the explosion device, which is actually going to be something that's going to hold my cell phone as well. And I'm also going to do the boots and the shoes. And hopefully I can get videos on all those. That way, you know, you have an idea of what I'm doing start to finish. And I also get a lot of requests and comments about the mask. I do have a video for the mask, but I did it all freehand. And it doesn't look very traditional. I kind of mashed up Ralph McQuarrie style with Predator. And at the time, I loved it, and I still do, but it, this is a little more traditional, and it clashes a little, so I am going to do more of a basic, old-school-looking uh, bio-helmet in the future. I also want to do the Predator's face as well and have a bio-helmet that goes over it, although doing the face is going to be pretty tricky. So I think I can pull it off. I mean, if I pulled off Venom and things like that, I figure I can probably get this too. But thank you to everybody for subscribing. We have now passed 1,700 subscribers, and I am really, really appreciative of that. Thank you, each and every one. And also as well on Instagram, we're past 700. Facebook, I think we're getting to 600. And everybody says, Facebook's dead. Nobody goes on it. Well, only 600 of you are. And I really do appreciate all that. And as always, 
I hope that your cosplays and your day go great. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.